The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. This is a great day. Aren't you glad to be in church? I wouldn't miss it for anything. Besides, I'm the pastor. Today's message entitled, Every Adversity an opportunity. Every adversity, an opportunity. This new year, let us as believers, called Christians, Christ-like, take every adversity and use it as an opportunity. Opportunity for success and victory. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight. And the rough places, smooth. Can you imagine? God is prophesying for us that even the valleys will be filled and will be plain. Every obstacle that stands before a child of God can be removed. Because we have been equipped with the power of the Holy Ghost according to the Word of God with the ability to challenge everything that is opposed to us in the line of difficulties. We can challenge every difficulty. We can challenge every issue. We can challenge everything that comes against us and we have the ability and the power to level the mountains. We have the ability and the power to fill the valley. If the ways are crooked, it will be straightened. No matter what kind of a obstacle is before us, we have been called and equipped. According to Ephesians 2, 6, we have been seated together with Christ in a place of authority and power to overcome obstacles and situations and sickness and disease and financial trouble and all kinds of trouble. Today, I'm telling you today, this is the beginning of a new year and this is the beginning of, a, uh, of, of things Changing for you and for me. If we have financial trouble, they will change. Because God, my God, is a God that supplies. My God will supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Don't forget who God is. The God that you worship will supply. But you got to worship the God who supplies. Not so that he will supply, but be, because he is God and he wants to supply. He wants to give us benefits. He wants to bless us to the point where we are not well able to receive the blessings. They are going to be so abundant. There's going to be no room to receive. The scripture says. But yet he's going to pour it upon us so that we can maybe share it with others. And that's okay with me. Isn't that okay with you? Amen. Amen. So we have the ability to challenge everything that comes against us. Why? We're children of God. We are the children of the king. We are king's kids. 
We ought to rise with power, with strength, with a formidable power that God has given us by the Holy Ghost. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. So the, le- the valleys are going to be filled and leveled and plain. The mountains are going to be gone. Wow. This year is going to be a year of victory. Amen. 2016 is a new year. And God is doing a new thing on the earth. And he's using his church to do a new thing. And first of all, what he's doing with his church is he's maturing his church so that the church will come to a place where they stand in power and authority. Listen, whatever you lost in the past, God can restore seven times. He can restore a hundred times. But he will restore. So we all have trials, tribulations. We all have to face up and face right smack in front of us some of the issues. But we're going to have to learn not to run away, but to face them head on. And let them know, let those situations, difficulties know that they're going to go in the face of Jesus Christ. Because we have Jesus in us. The King of glory. Now there's a scripture in Daniel. Daniel was, was a man that went through some difficult trials. And... I'm not going to read it, but it's Daniel chapter seven, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. How Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego wound up taken away captive from Judah and, and brought to uh, Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar wanted to teach them and wanted them to dress up nice. And, uh, in fact, they picked the handsomest guys around, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, they were very, uh, and, and Daniel, were very handsome men. But they were not only handsome, but they were also uh, full of wisdom. They were top-notch students when they were going to the classroom in elementary school and high school. They were the valedictorians of their classes. They were very intelligent because God gave them that wisdom. You can pray for your kids to be valedictorians. You can pray for your kids to be top of their classes. Uh, You know, parents, when when you pray for the kids at night uh, as they're sleeping, pray for them that they will be able to handle these teachers that are worldly and, and and, and, and uh, full of wrong language, blasphemous language in the class. But God can give us beyond and go beyond in spite of what the world is going through and in spite of the spirit of Antichrist working in the world. So Daniel... And his uh, colleagues, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they were put to the test. It was a big test. Daniel and um, the three Hebrew children that were later on thrown into the fiery furnace, that was quite a trial. That was quite a judgment to put him in a fiery furnace. And they stood the test. They stood in faith. 
And God sent forth his angels and delivered them. He sent forth, as a matter of fact, his pre-incarnate Christ. God himself came into the midst of the fire. And the king recognized the fourth man in the fire. Wow. God himself showed up in the fire. Well, if God shows up and you're going through the fire, guess what? You're not going to be burned. If you're going through the river and the river covers you with water, you are not going to drown. If you're going through a storm, don't worry about it. Jesus may seem to be sleeping, but he's in charge. Amen? In fact, you don't even have to wake him up this time because we learned our lesson from the disciples. After they woke him up and he stilled the wind and the waves, and the wind and the waves obeyed them. He turned to the disciples. He says, where's your faith? How come you woke me up? Why didn't you take authority over the weather? I've given you power and authority. Behold, I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We forget, we think that we're learning stories here like fables. It's not fables. It's true. It's power. It's reality. Spiritual reality that can change things for you. You can level the mountains. You can come against the storm and stop the storm. You say, Pastor, why are you talking like that? Did you ever stop a storm? I have. If I didn't, I wouldn't be preaching. That it's possible. You mean literal storm? Yes, literal storm. Yes, the wind and the, the, the rain and, and the snow and all of that stuff. I've experienced that. And you can experience the same. Probably some of you have a testimony about that. About that. So, Daniel was a man that went through a lot of trials. First, he was taken away. And when I say Daniel, I'm talking about his friends to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were taken away 800 miles from their country. 800 miles away, moved out of the that big trial. That's a big trial. The enemy comes in and, and leads these believers into another city, in another country. They're so far away from home. Can you imagine you're living here in Rome or, or the, the vicinity and somebody kicks you out of your house and, or takes you away and, and puts you in Nigeria or whatever country uh, there is that's uh, taking over? Um, you know, you'd be very dismayed. You'd be, uh, I mean, that's a big trial to begin with. Let alone, uh, you know, when you think about Daniel, but Daniel was related to the king of Judah and he was royalty. And see, all of that was taken away from him. He was a rich man and everything was taken away from him. Now he was put in the king's palace and and, uh, and now he was going to be fed with, with the king's uh, dainties and, and food and, and all of that stuff. Uh, but he still was faithful to his God and faithful and true to his convictions. So this year, we're going to encounter many challenges and opportunities. So whenever, whenever there is a challenge, look at it as an opportunity, not a failure. It's not a time to fail. It's a time to succeed. You could lose your job and still think about it this way. I'm going to get a better job. Amen? Amen? You, you, your health can go downhill, but look at it this way. You're going to get stronger and healthier. 
the outcome is going to be greater. Amen? So every encounter has challenges and opportunities. So whenever you're going through trial or test, guess what? You ought to rejoice. Now the scripture says that. I didn't make that up. When you fall into diverse temptations, count it all joy. James chapter 1. Now if we obey the scripture, it will work for us. But sometimes we get upset like we used to get upset when we were in the world. And the Bible says when you're going through trial, rejoice. And I was stand up and start shouting and praising the Lord. That's what they're saying. So we face things this year. It's going to seem like we are rowing upstream. Facing a society that is mostly anti-Christian. No matter what we experience in this unpredictable 2016, as cultural, political, and spiritual changes approach us, we might experience what Daniel went through. Being away from his family, his country, put under pressure to study a new language, eat foreign food. I mean, when, when we went to Nigeria, we, we ate mostly cooked chicken and cooked beef and all of that stuff. We wouldn't touch the rest of the stuff because you never know what, what's on it. You know, I mean, they told us here, don't eat the vegetables, and, uh, but you can eat um, a banana because you can, you can peel it, and inside is clean and, and good. You can, eat, you can eat an orange because you can peel it, and it's, it's, um, the, the health is contained within it. So, you know, you have to choose what you eat out there. When you go to other countries, I'd be careful with the water. I mean, Paul writes to Timothy, he says, uh, drink no longer water, but a little wine for your, for your many infirmities, for your stomach's sake and many infirmities. You know, because he, he used to get sick when he drank water. He says, don't drink any more water. And their drink in those days was wine. But you got to drink a little bit. He didn't want him to get drunk. Okay? It's all right to drink. But it's not all right to get drunk. The Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine to excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I mean, they, they uh, talked about Jesus that he was a wine bibber and, and, a, and a drunkard because he, he drank with the rest of them. But he drank, but not to excess. Uh, I bet you he drank one cup of, of wine the whole day. Or maybe two, at the most. But they didn't have soda in those days. Okay? So Daniel decided to stay true to his convictions. By eating different foods, he resisted eating the, the king's food. He didn't bow down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. He was faithful to pray to his God. He wasn't going to worship any other God. He was in a strange country like we are in the world today. And we're, the temptation is great. It's not easy. It's not simple. You've you got to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus all the time. You've got to be filled with the Spirit all the time. Otherwise, you know, the temptation is great. 
But I want to read you in uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Romans 5. Um, and I'm reading from a different translation. I'm reading from the message Bible. But let me read you one verse of scripture from the King James and, and show you the difference between the two. Uh, you know, uh, the Message Bible really enlarges and amplifies and opens it up to understand in today's language. Uh, the Old English, it was ancient English, and it speaks in ancient English. That's the King James. It's okay if you study that language, the ancient English, but if you don't study it, you'll be lost. You wouldn't know what thou meant. And, uh, hast been, whatever. Therefore, this is the King James. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here's the Romans 5, and I'm going to read all the way through verse 5 from the message. Entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us. Justified by faith in the King James. Set us right with him. Make us fit for him. We have it all together with God. Because of our master, Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where he always hoped we might stand. Out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory. Standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles. Because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us. Troubles, tests, trials develop patience in us. Why do we go through trials? Well, I mean, you can question God all you want, but everybody's going to go through trials. You think you went through 2015 without trials and you're not going to go through trials, everybody's going to go through trials. So, what are the trials for? Why are we allowed trials in our lives? To develop our character. To build patience. Not impatience. Not go around saying, I'm always angry. I'm always angry. No, to develop patience. To know how to sit still, stand still, get into rest. So to develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. Getting us ready. Preparing us. In alert expectancy such as this, we are never left feeling short-changed. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough. Listen to this. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Ghost. So, 
I have a couple of points here. Let's look at a few points from the scripture that we need to apply in our lives. God offers a solution in every challenge in life. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there has no temptation taken us or testing us, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted or tested above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You're going to be able to handle it and you will come through squeaky clean. Another point, stop blaming others for the problems you face. Daniel could have blamed Nebuchadnezzar and others for his situation. Instead, he honored God and gave glory to him simply by praying. Daniel did not become bitter because he was taken to jail, but he was patient waiting on God. For anyone to keep others, blaming others for one situation becomes an excuse to keep one from taking responsibility. Jesus never blamed others on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. God wants us to use in a greater way. He wants to use you in a greater way than ever before. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. So we are not... <coughs> Giving up, how should we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times. The lavish celebration prepared for us there's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we cannot see now will last forever. So folks, we're going to forge through. We're going to go through overcoming with a face like a flint, as, a, as God told the prophet. You face the issues and the problems head on. And you say, I'm going to overcome you. I'm going to have the victory. Victory is mine. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 730 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, May the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.